Welcome to another edition of Handicap Boy Black in America. I'm your host, Ramon Roan, and this is being brought to you by Judicial Freedom Riders Incorporated. Um, please visit us at www.jfrinc.org. Please subscribe to this video as we are looking to bring you more relevant and uh, recent and, and informative content on our videos. The title of this video is Philly schools are dangerous for teachers also. Um, recently, a 68-year-old substitute teacher was slammed by a student. The teacher told the student, "Is a young woman was sitting on, a, on the student's lap, male student's lap, and um, he told, the, he told the, the student to get off of the, the male student. And the male student said, gave him an expletive, F you. And, um, and the next thing you know, he's picking up the 60-year-old, 68-year-old teacher and body slamming him. Hits his head on the ground, he's not completely out. You've probably seen the video or images online. And um, I don't know if, if I don't, I, we know that there's a, there's a problem in the black community as far as the, the family, the breakdown of the family. However, the, there's a problem in our, in our school system to where kids don't have respect for authority. When I was coming up, we couldn't talk back. If we was going to talk back to a, an adult, well, we heard it from not only in school, but even when we got home. Now, how in the world did we get from to where, from where we were at in, in the 50s and 60s to here we are, 2014, and when a student is cursing at a, tell, a teacher and then physically assaulting that, that teacher, that teacher there is to help him to help that young man graduate. I find it very troubling, to say the least. We do have a problem in our community, the black community. And our problem is that we need to have more discipline in our, with our kids. So I don't know the young man, his, um, his upbringing, I don't know. I know that it can't be proper for him to do that. That's actually a charge. He should be thrown in jail, or juvenile jail for this, in this case here. But it's just an indication of the problem in our families. For there is no way for John, or, and John Singletary and myself, or Larry, to actually go and assault. As a matter of fact, John's parents were, were teachers. There's no way that we could have gone into school and assault the teacher and even think that that was right doing so. I pray that we open our eyes to what's going on in the black community because what's going to happen with this young man is that it's slamming the teacher today and maybe robbing somebody tomorrow. If he does not change his direction, that young man want to be in a prison system, and actually, that's what it's designed for, for people like him. Unfortunately, our prisons are populated, half, nearly half of the population of prison are black young men. And this young man, if, he, if somebody doesn't step into his life, he's going to end up incarcerated. I know you're probably saying I shouldn't be saying that, but the fact of the matter is that if at 16 or 15 or 18 years, whatever how old he is, as a teenager, he's, he's doing that to disobey authority, eventually he's going to end up where he's going to be wearing not his clothes, but he's going to be wearing prison, a prison outfit. What am I saying? I'm saying that we need to deal with the root of the problem. Our government is actually complicit 
in that kid in that child's behavior. I was listening to a recent video by Dr. Michelle Alexander, and she pointed out for lack of opportunities, it will push you to violence. You're not not she's not she wasn't or I'm not or she wasn't trying to excuse it, but to explain it. When you have a lack of job opportunities, you're going to have less marriages. You're going to have more crime. You're going to have more violence. Men will lash out. We are, there's a bunch of testosterone that men have. And when you're at 16 to 25, 30 years old, there's a lot of testosterone that's built up. And when you lack in job opportunities, business opportunities, opportunities to actually raise a family, well, there is going to be less marriages. And those less marriages are going to mean single mothers raising boys. And unfortunately, single mothers are not equipped. No offense to some of you, but not, most single mothers are not equipped to raise boys. Matter of fact, really, you should, there should be two parents. There should be co-parenting there. And, there, and so I can't, if you look at this young man at nine times out of ten, there's no father in that home when boys act out like that. There's no father in that home because I could imagine when I was growing up that if I had done something like that, I would have to deal with my father, which I never wanted to have to deal with him. <laughs> no. So there is no, he had, he had no disregard. What was going through his mind? I'm going to cuss out the teacher, and then I'm going to body slam him. Because I'm going to go back home, and I'm not going to have to worry about anything because my mother is not my mother is not going to do anything because I've been able to do all I wanted. Matter of fact, I don't even have to call her mom. I can call her by her first name. This is the issue of the breakdown of the black family. And I hate it when white people, no offense to my white brothers and sisters, but I hate it when white people are saying that and we're not, we don't, we criticize them for saying it. But this is the truth, this is the truth. Sometimes we don't like the truth, but the truth is always good to hear. It's necessary to hear. I break down family, but the fact is that our government is complicit. I believe, uh, similar to Dr. Omar Johnson, that we need to have separation. We need to have independence in the black community. Not necessarily uh, a, an old community, but we need to have an independence in that black community to, to where, such as what we had in the 30s, the 40s, and the 50s. Brought into the civil rights movement, brought in some other things that were, not, that were actually detrimental to our community. And we can see the decline of the black community starting in the mid-60s. However, this has been another edition of Handicapped Born Black in America. Please remember to subscribe to this channel and please visit our website at www.jfrinc.org. And may God bless you and may God bless America.